<laughs> we can go live because we're not talking about things that may get us thrown off of YouTube now or Facebook. Praise the Lord. Now, my friends, how you treat people and how you love people and how you serve people is very important. Amen. We put on, we're, we clothe ourselves in, in holiness. Put on the garments of praise. So there's a garment of praise. Holiness is a clothing that you can put on. Okay? Righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness. So we're talking about, let's see. You guys are God in class with Jesus in you. You better know that you are all. The Bible says, I have an unction from the Holy One and I know all things. Amen. The Bible says that. You are greater than your teachers with the Spirit of God in you. The Bible talks about, even in Psalms, about the wisdom that you have. The all-sufficient God, the all-knowing God, the all-wise God lives in you. And you are made in His image and His likeness. So if somebody comes to you and says, hey, do you have a solution to this problem? Don't say, no, I do not have a solution. Say, I don't have one now, but I will get it. Amen. And don't talk it that way in a place of falseness, but talk that way in a place of knowing that you can go to the throne room, get the wisdom that's needed for that problem, and then bring it back. Amen. I had a friend of mine, Mike, who was a Vietnam vet. He was a tough dude, and he used to come in here and preach. And one time there was this gangbanger from the street, and he was talking about how bad he was, this, that, and the other. And Mike got fed up with his crap and he said, listen, how do you know that you're martial arts and you're any tough? How, how do you know that you're tough? And he goes, well, because I got this and this. He says, have you ever killed a man? And he goes, well, no. He says, then shut up and sit down. You don't know if you're any good on that. You know, Mike was just a no joke type of guy. One day, Mike went, Mike and Jan Butler, they went over to Lincoln City to do a little teaching. And at night, one woman said, hey, I'm going to pray for you guys. And she lays hands on them for five minutes and prays in tongues before they leave and get in their car. And she says, well, whatever it is, I feel like God, you know, resolved it. I just felt the burden in my spirit to pray. And they're driving home and from Lincoln City. They're coming back over here in the foothills. And they come over a ledge real quick, about 55, 60 mile an hour. It's foggy. And there's a, a full-blown cow right in the middle of the road. And Mike grabs for the dashboard and Jan braces you know the steering wheel one of them yells Jesus and uh, they drive right through the cow and Mike looks at Jan and says did you see and he says the cow he goes yes well the lady had done intercession to keep him from you know having an accident that night and um, anyways yeah Mike Mike, he, he's a good brother. Maybe I'll have him come in here and teach sometime. He's a, he's a very tough individual, but knows the word, walks in the word. Is, um, you know, is, is, uh, he's a millwright. And so here's how I was going to go with it. He was a millwright, and some problems in the factory, on these, some of these machines are very complex. And he goes to the Holy Ghost and asks the Holy Spirit for wisdom. And the Holy Spirit gives him his answers right there. And they send him to pro problem shoot things. And, he's, and, he, and they want him to problem shoot things. And he says, because I'm, I'm actually the one that's just down in the mud. Do you go to the job site and turn the porta potty upside down and start drinking the water by what you let go into your ears and what's coming out of you? That blue water is not fresh water. It's in the bottom of those porta potties, I can tell you that. Just drop your phone in there. <laughs> Well, that's what you guys are doing when you're talking on your phone and you're talking all this rubbish, gossip, backbite, all that. we got to clean it up and get rid of that business and get the Word of God in our mind. Holding fast the Word of life so that you may rejoice in the day of Christ that I, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason you also be glad and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. Now listen, the Apostle Paul is saying that there is no one but Timothy that's like-minded. That that's honestly 
really sad. You know, they say that 80% of the people in America don't carry the weight, only 20% are working and carrying the burden of 80% of the people. And the 20% of the people that are working hard sometimes want to get in the, the free cart and get a free ride and a free check too. They're like, well, if they're getting a free check, some of the people got to get out of the cart and start pushing too. This isn't communism or socialism. It doesn't work. If you pay people the same rate and yet some people work harder and do better, you're, you're missing it. At the turn of our, at the founding of our, 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 uh, our country, this is not really talked about in history too much, but some of the pilgrims were sharing everything and it was kind of rough. And then they said, no, we're going to give everybody their own plot of ground and each person's responsible for it. And they did much better. Because you were you either ate or didn't eat based on how much you produced. You didn't just get fed but because of the work of the lawn or some other people were doing. But here he's saying that he has nobody else that is sincerely caring for these saints. Nobody else. Man, that's crazy to me to think of that. That Paul only had one person. That's similar today. I can only think of a few people that if I drop them off in other countries and other churches starting churches, that they would have the spiritual foundation and the heart and the, and the compassion for the people maybe to see it come through. That aren't concerned about their own interests. For all seek their own and not the things which are of Christ Jesus. But you know, you know his proven character that as a son with a father he served with me in the gospel. Therefore I hope to send him at once as soon as I see how it goes with me. But I trust in the Lord that I myself shall also come shortly. Yeah. Now I'm going to jump to chapter 3. Finally, my brother, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same thing to you is not tedious, but for you to say, Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of uh, mutilation. For we are, we are the circumcision of... Uh, who worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I, I more so. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew, a Hebrew. Concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning righteousness, which is of the law blameless. But the things were gained to me, these I have counted the loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all these things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having my own my righteousness, not my not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings. He wanted to know the fellowship of the Lord's sufferings. Is that a prayer that any of the uh, American churches is praying today? I want to know your sufferings, Lord. I want to fellowship and partake of that with you. That's not something that I hear a lot of preach. But there's a depth in that. And I'm not preaching on that today, but we'll get into that. But listen to this. You, have you ever seen guys come into the men's home and they're all crowned up? Well, I keep the Sabbath, I eat this, I eat that. And you kind of deal with them because of the weakness of their walk. Jesus said, you know, Paul said, hey, be compassionate on the weaker brother who has to carry the feast and all that. Now the feasts are going to happen. We're going to have the wedding set of the land. We're going to have the feast of tabernacles. All these things are God appointed, ordained, and we're moving forward. But Paul is dealing with a prideful spirit where people are crowned up because I am a full-blown Levite Jew. I can trace my lineage all the way back to, you know, whatever. Um, you run into these people. It's in Christ, my friend. A prostitute can get saved, Amen. delivered, filled with the Holy Spirit. And at that time, she's just, just, just as righteous as you. You're either in or you're out. Those who have Christ have life. Those who do not have Christ do not have life. It's not in what you do. It's not in your accolades. It's not in your works. It's only in Jesus is their freedom and righteousness. You better get that. There's a lot of crowning up that goes on because people are insecure. They haven't been perfected in God's love, so they're trying to do something and show it off so that I'm better than you, so that I'm valuable. No, my friend, you're valuable because of the blood. You're valuable because Jesus said you were and he gave his life for you, not by your own works. Receive it and bask in it. Quit trying to earn it. And, and this is a dumb religious spirit that you still see 
strutting around a day. And you see it popping its head up in different ways. Well, brother, I went to this prophetic conference. I had these people lay, lay hands on me, so I'm here or there. Well, listen, I can get my prayer closet and have Jesus visit me. The sum total of everything that exists. Quit running around to all these conferences, sit in your prayer closet, read your Bible, and pursue God with all your heart and become a finished product. Don't run around looking for finished products all the time. Yes. No, it's a good thing to hear ministers and go see people that have walked with God. You can receive, nothing, nothing wrong with that. But there's something that only comes with Him, sitting down with Him, and you and Him together. That intimate relationship. And you can't get that running around. And people get crowned up, and they need to stop that. And Paul was the Pharisee of Pharisees trained in the Gamaliel, and he says, I count it all lost, all done, all crap, to receive the excellency of Christ. Okay. And when he's talking about, you know, that your works is a filthy rag, if you did deal with that a little deeper in the scriptures, you might find some translations and interpretations that Paul's really talking about a dirty menstrual rag. That's what he compares your works to. So next time you get crowned up, just think of a dirty menstrual rag just to keep you in the right humility. I just don't like the pride that comes on these guys, man. I mean, the other day I was going to help a brother right off the streets and he was homeless and all that. And when I heard him talking, instantly I knew that he was going to go through a rough patch. Guy had been all over the world, ministered all over, was a missionary all over, gave his life to the Lord. But he was equating and talking to me about all the things that he'd done when we're just meeting. When I listen with my ears on what comes out of people's hearts or mouths, I'm, I'm instantly able to kind of discern it, even without discernment, to know what's going on. Even That wasn't even the gift of discernment. That was just me listening to him talk about everything that he'd done. Well, you're crowned up. I'm not going around talking about things. That, and then Paul says, I don't even glory in going and having heavenly visitations and all this, like all these other windbags. He goes, Paul says, I glory in the beatings that I took in for the gospel. Amen. So he's different. Because some of you are like, oh, I've been to the 13th heaven. I've danced with angels. I'm caught up in the heaven every other day. You know, blah, 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 blah. Shut up. Why don't you squash the toilet and weed out here? Now we're getting somewhere. If you felt, help your fellow man, you love him. Amen. Now I'm for visions. I'm for prophecy. I want you guys to pound for the unseen supernatural things. But don't ever get crowned up in it. If the Lord takes you and transports you like Philip so you can minister to somebody, rejoice in it. Enjoy the supernatural. But don't think you're better or crowned up because you have these experiences. Just enjoy them with the Holy Ghost and share them with others so they can grow. Praise God. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm so awesome because of, you know, my, my good miracle ministry or whatever. Well, the Lord gave that to you. Why are you getting crowned up in it? It's not yours anyway. Heaven gave it to you. You better thank heaven for giving it to you. And if you don't use it right, God's going to hold you accountable for it. That's not anything to get prideful about. But we do. And Satan comes and visits you. Oh, look at you. Who else lays hands on people and sees them healed every time like you? You're the greatest. You know, he visits you. He's a dirtbag too. Satan is a dirty player. How he comes at people, try to, try to play their insecurities. Because they've not been rooted and grounded in God's love. God's love will root you and ground you and you keep you right. Satan has no substitute for it. You get into God's love, my friend, and you're unstoppable. You're unstoppable. So get in his love. Now I'm going to finish up with this. My offering was a real long offering. But I got more money today than usual, so I'll keep doing it. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. People on, the, people on the Facebook going nuts. Oh my God, he's one of those. I had one one time when the pastor took me up and he says, I'm, I'm just here to rebuke all the pastors in town. I'm like, great. I'm sitting at lunch and Teddy, a prophet, he was like 75 years old. He turns to me, oh, I don't see anything good coming out of this today. And uh, this guy's like, I want to just rebuke you that, you know, you, uh, you're doing it for money, this, that, and the other, and this, and that. And I'm like, brother, let me tell you something. Just because you've been hurt by bad ministries doesn't mean that you have a ministry to go around and correct pastors. I'm like, you're way out of line. You're not in your jurisdiction. And I'm like, you're a, you're a punk in a windbag. I'm going to tell you something else. You come with me today to the prison ministry. See how much offerings I get. We'll get some socks and some top ramen. You know nothing about me. Everything that you're saying is rubbish. Because it's like, you know what you're doing. I'm here just to cause you to call you to repentance. 
I'm like, a true prophet will tell you you need to repent. It'll tell you what to repent of. He doesn't say you know what you're doing, fill in the blanks. I'm like, that's witchcraft and manipulation. I said, get your heart right, get healed, and kick rocks, brother. You know what I'm saying? You don't mean nothing. You don't know me anything. You don't know me at all. You're not right. Why don't you correct yourself instead of going around and correcting pastors? That's not a ministry, you know? Well, anyways, he, he didn't realize that I'm a street preacher, and I don't mince words, and I don't play games. So the other people that were sitting there were kind of like, what the heck's this, you know? I think they were kind of shocked at my, my response to the guy when it went off on them. But you can't, guys, you can't. I don't think Paul would tiptoe around retiredness. He was a name dropper, and he called stuff out that was wrong. You know, we need to, to not to expose people. But when there's a snake in the grass, he called them out. He's like, watch out for these people. They do X, Y, and Z. Just get it out in the open. He exposed the works of darkness. And if somebody's hurting, and they're going around and hurting other ministers because of the hurt they had, and they're not having a legitimate ministry from what God is calling them to, the love of God, you need to call it out. You need to stop that business. But here's what I'm really getting at today. And here's what I want to focus on. Philippians 3, 17. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who are who so walk as as you have, have as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who set their minds on earthly things. They set their minds on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Let's just ponder on that for a second, that so much of our life and things are on the earthly things. But what I'm trying to say is that we are citizenships of heaven. That's where our citizenship is. And we need to think of it. And we have people in here from different tribes, races, and nationalities. But, you know, my brother here, he's native, but really his, his true citizenship is heaven, not native. You know? And um, many streams and many cultures make glad the city of God. You know what I mean? There's going to be many, many coming in. But, but really, our citizenship, no matter whether we're male or female, or what race, or what tribe, or what creed, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ, and our citizenship is, is above. And because your citizenship is above, you are made as image and as likeness. You have, Let me put it to you this way. You may not know that you know everything, but you know everything. Because the Holy Spirit, who knows all things and is in everywhere, is in you. And Satan is very nervous about you finding out what you have and developing your spirit to where you can tap into the unseen realms to get the wealth of heaven to bring his will to the earth. You're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. You're, the, you're God's best here. Because Christ is in you. Now we're taking our eyes off of the worldly things and we're focusing it on Him. Yes. And as that happens, we're more effective. I'm more effective when I'm not looking at what my neighbor's buying or has Amen. or what my neighbor's doing or comparing myself to other people or looking at things in this earth. Yes. I'm more effective when I'm thinking about spiritual things and asking God what He wants me to do that day. How He wants to use my life and the gifts and the treasures He puts in me to benefit other people. Paul said, I don't have many people that will have your interests like Timothy. I've got one person that will really care for your interests like Timothy. Then Paul, on the end here, talking about citizens in heaven, say that people are running themselves through with all kinds of, of, of worthless stuff. And their mind isn't on things in heaven. we got to have our mindset on things in heaven. But here's where people get super spiritual as they go, okay, I'm setting my mind on things in heaven. I'm just not going to work a job and I'm I'm just going to live in a corner. No. You're supposed to get together with God. You're supposed to bring your wisdom into your job or your business. 
You're supposed to get all the wealth of the world and lay it up, lay it for down for the kingdom of God to grow. You're supposed to go and dominate in all the spheres of influence in society, impact it with the Holy Ghost. So you can be a light there, but you can also have the wisdom to get the treasure to build the kingdom of God. I t you know, in Ecclesiastes, he says, to those that I love, I give wisdom, knowledge, and joy. And to those that I hate, I give the job of reaping up, heaping up, and gathering to give to those that I love. So he says he gives the job of gathering to those he hates. But to those he loves, he didn't say he gives money. He says he gives them wisdom, knowledge, and joy. Well, length of days and riches is honors and wisdom. Knowledge has its own benefits. Joy has its own benefits. So if you love God, you get to know him. You get wisdom. You get the wisdom of God. Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit can do. The Holy Spirit can do things that you can never do. Amen. There is a businessman who's a believer who does a lot of preaching too, but he's really a businessman. He makes a lot of money and so feeds people all over. One time he went to a church that's not really that full gospel. And the Lord tells him, get up there and pray in tongues. So he gets up in the front. He says, Harada, rosoko, tobo, riya, katana, mras, katata. He goes, this is what the Lord's telling me to do. This is the kind of faith and boldness. He prays in tongues for 10, 10 or 12 minutes, uncomfortably long. In a church that is not tongue, you know, talking tight. <clears throat> so they're all looking at him with big eyes, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Lord doesn't tell him to do anything else. All of a sudden, a lady in the back stands up and yells, runs to the front, says, my daughter, who's in the mission field, was so remote, it takes several days to get there, then you got to go over land several days and hike in and stuff. It's not all by a vehicle. They had sent me a letter and said she's going to die. That there's no hope for her. That she's going to die. That there's no way she can make it. They may not even be able to send her body back. And she taught me some of the words and language when she was here. And when he got up and was speaking, some of the words were saying, she's going to be fine. I'm healing her. I'm restoring her fully to health. And she was. She never died. But the interpretation of tongues was for that one woman in that service. What I'm saying is the Holy Spirit knows a lot more than you know. You need to roll with it, even when it doesn't make sense to your natural mind. You'll get picked up. We're supposed to soar and fly in the spirit. We're not supposed to live down into the carnality of the flesh. We're supposed to rise above. We're supposed to soar with the spirit, moving in the speed of the spirit. There's things that the Lord will tell me throughout the day. Throughout the day. Just yesterday, I was cutting and I wanted to put my beam saw away. I was like, man, I want to get this thing away. I don't want it left out and driven on by Jeff when he pulled his truck out and stuff. Because it was in the path. But I kind of sense a nudge of the Spirit saying, no, don't put it away yet. Well, I put it away. And then Eric needed it next for another cut. So did I. But it's things like that that you can, you can actually know more than you know if you step out of yourself and into Him. You're a citizen of heaven. You guys are, are royal citizens. Don't be a royal pain in the rear. You know what I mean? Be a royal citizen of heaven. I can't. I, can't. Like, what? I woke somebody up. No, but um, you're a citizen of heaven. You can step into the spirit. You can know all things. Just because you don't have the information now does not mean you don't have it in your spirit. And you can ask God for it and mind it. And so I just want to encourage you to be a citizen of heaven. Let's focus on, Lord, we just come before you this, this Sunday. And we ask, Lord, that our focus would not be on earthly things, number one. We ask, Lord, that you do a work, a work in our heart and get our, our vision correct. Correct our vision. Yes, Lord. Let us see as you see. Yes, Lord. Let us hear as you hear. And let us feel as you feel. Yes, Lord. Lord, let us be the type of men where the Apostle Paul could send us out like Timothy. Because we would truly be concerned with your, Lord, with your agenda. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.